What's up guys, CP1 here back with another mini review of the Gigabyte GAB350 and Wi-Fi motherboard. Our mini reviews are short, sharp and mostly to the point, but speaking of the to point, let's jump into the mini review. So in the design department, this board is much like many other mini ITX board, but actually you'd be kind of wrong in thinking that. Kicking things off, we do find ourselves a brown PCB with black and red accents, and whilst it may not go with all builds, it is tastefully placed and the red and black accents do offset the brownness to the motherboard and overall do give it a fairly decent aesthetic. Speaking of aesthetic, if we just take a look at this thing, there are chips and stuff all over this board and it's actually amazing there's any actual PCB to hold this guy together. Now speaking of those chips, we do find ourselves five thermal sensors with two onboard fan headers with support for up to 24 watts of power, meaning fan splitters should not be a problem. Pair this up with their Smart Fan 5 software and you'll have some really good control over the temps and and thermals of your system, even though temps and thermals are the same thing. Also too, in the design you may notice the RAM DIMMs are rather spaced out from each other. In fact, it looks like this board could actually have four RAM DIMMs, even though there's only two in there. The reason for this is so that the coolers can actually be larger with this motherboard and not be so limiting. A lot of smaller ITX boards like this one from example from Gigabyte actually have their RAM DIMMs relatively close to the socket, meaning that large coolers are going to be hard to install. But this time around, Geekbyte has thought of that and spaced them closer to the edge so you don't have to worry about running out of space. Even AMD's larger Wrath cooler is actually rather large, meaning that if you have large RAM DIMMs and also to a large cooler, you're going to have some problems here. So with them spaced out, we can run large coolers and also to high profile RAM, which is actually really nice and I wish a lot of mini ITX boards would actually do this. This makes all their connectors like SATA, 24 pin and other things like that move up to the top of the motherboard, however I personally would like this trade-off as I could have a bigger cooler, bigger RAM and not have too much of an effect here. Now moving on from that we do have some pretty cool I.O. In terms of I.O. we are looking at four USB 3.0 ports, two USB 3.1 type A connectors, HDMI and DisplayPort for your new APUs coming down the line, Wi-Fi connectivity with support for 802.11ac, A, B, G and not to mention N as well as Bluetooth so really everything that's wirelessly connected can hook up to this guy. We're also to getting Gigabit LAN powered by the Realtek GBE LAN chipset with support for their C for Speed network management software. This software is actually really handy and we'll touch on it a little bit more in the later parts of the video. On top of this, we're also to getting a 7.1 channel audio setup powered by the Realtek ALC1220 codec, which is rated for a massive 120 decibel sound level. So if you want to blast your ears out, this can definitely handle that. Inside the board, we're also to getting ourselves the AIM4 socket with the B350 chipset, two RAM DIMMs with the aforementioned spacing that we did talk about, as well as the fact that these guys are rated for up to 32 gigs of RAM and possibly more as RAM capacities do get more dense. We're also to getting a metal reinforced PCIe 60 next slot with rear mounted M.2 socket, four SATA ports and plenty of RGB LED support. Do note however that the rear mounted M.2 slot may be a little bit of a challenge for some cases as they may be fairly flush with the motherboard so if you want a big heatsink or just a thicker uh, PCIe M.2 slot uh, storage device, you may be in a little bit of trouble. So do keep in mind what drive you'll be putting in the back of this guy. Power-wise, the power delivery system is typical Gigabyte fashion, extremely overbuilt. With server grade of chokes, high-end capacitors, and long life MOSFETs, you are really looking at getting some decent quality parts here. This should make for some decent overclocks on such a small motherboard, and decent and reliable power. On the topic of power, Gigabyte's also too claiming a new generation of IR digital power controllers for more precise and longer lifespan parts, so pretty nice there. The software suite, as I did touch on a little bit before, is actually, well, quite sweet, offering us quite a lot of different software, from their Smart 5 fan control with all their temp sensors, to things like their superior new BIOS that actually is really easy to use, and their C for Speed network management software. Really cool software, does a great job. And for the RGB people out there, there's also to the RGB Fusion app on both your phone and also to on the PC. So whether you want to control it on your mobile phone or control it on the PC itself, there's actually a ton of support for RGB, not to mention RGB 
headers and also to an RGB strip down the side of this motherboard. Overall, once again, this board is absolutely freaking jam-packed. On the plus side for this motherboard, there are just so many features. There's also to a ton of control, whether you want to control fans, temperatures or LEDs, there's a ton of things there and not to mention a clean and fairly simple aesthetic. Sure, there's a few red and black things all over the place, but red and black does go fairly well with a lot of systems out there. Though with that being said, on the downside, red and black may not be going with every single build. The location of the SATA and 24 pin will definitely not work in some cases being mounted at the top, will flat out not work with a lot of them as there's no way to get 24 pin up there, but in most cases you should be fine there. And on top of this, the price tag for it may be a little bit high for a B350 motherboard. However, with that being said, speaking of price coming in around 180 Australian dollars, it may not be cheap in terms of the grand scheme of things, but for a small form factor, high density and high end motherboard, it's actually not too bad. If you were building a small system and wanted a ton of good components and features and support for high end Ryzen chips, this board is extremely hard to pass up with all its temp controls, RGB controls and just controls everywhere. It's a really good board. Otherwise guys, let me know what you think down in that comment section. Do you prefer ATX style motherboards or do you prefer smaller things like ITX? Let me know down there. Otherwise, if you want to pick up one of these boards, I've left links down in that description box. And otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.